Jason Whitlock has been crushed these last few weeks after Stephen A. Smith's rebuttal. Did you tell them how you stood outside, outside of first tape begging me to talk to you? Did you tell them that once the same article in Deadspin came out, weeks later you wrote a lengthy apology to me in an email begging me to forgive you, pointing out how you were betrayed by this particular writer so you know how I must feel that you betrayed me? Did you tell the folks that? You... Did you tell them? You fat piece of... And now more are piling on. But it's like, I'm going to pick the right fights and the fights that are going to put money in my pocket. I'm just not going to fight anybody. You referenced Corey Holcomb. When Holcomb. his numbers went down, I, I stopped responding to him. <laughs> I don't respond <laughs> to him no more. <laughs> but, he says my name. I don't respond to him no more. <laughs> but, but you referenced Corey Holcomb. I used to be friends with Corey Holcomb. Mainly because it appears to some he can't keep certain figures' names out of his mouth. He's finished. Is he? Okay, yeah. Finished. He a garbage-ass bad Corey used to be my friend. Mother where I know you from? Yeah. Bobby had me drop you off at a hotel because you didn't have a ride. It was before Uber and shit. I don't know you. I know you used to talk about black people on my SPN, but right. they, they didn't like how you look because you sound like a dyke and you couldn't be a leading man how you look. Yeah. Comedian Corey Holcomb went after Whitlock only after the has-been mentioned him on his show. I, I, I don't pay attention to it. I mean, he says a lot of ignorant things about me. I, I've never paid attention to it, never responded to it. Because, and, and Corey Holcomb's got a nice little following. He, he does well on the Chitlin comedy circuit, and I, I don't say that to be dismissive, but that's what he, he's... he's built a nice little probably $500,000 a year career going around to little ghetto nightclubs and doing his comedy routine. They put him on a couple other shows. It just wasn't working. Yeah. His, his, his numbers was so bad. Yo, throat clock. My bad. We good? Mm -hmm. I ain't trying to make nobody. Who? be on the spot, but I got to speak on it, God damn it. Corey Holcomb, right. welcome, good morning. How do you know about Jason Whitlock, Corey? He's a professional burper. And he, he can lie about me and, and ridicule me and all that other stuff, but in my lane, for what I, he, he can't hurt me. Everything he says, he's looking for uh, approval from, um, Caucasian people, and right. I want I, I, I want to do those guys know that Caucasian people see it. He want me to respond. Some dude said he was a friend of mine. I used to be a friend of Corey. I used to be friends with Corey Holcomb. I don't even know this dude. One day, Bobby Glanton Smith asked me would I drop him off at the hotel. And I was like, yeah, i drop him off because I knew him from being on ESPN. But then when I watch how he used to sell out oh, brothers and sisters, no, I stopped. Okay. I was like, oh, uh, no, I can't uh, support that. I wish I did have $500,000. That's some good money. All right, look, so everybody knows how we feel about Jason Whitlock, and I want to revisit something very quickly. The problem with Jason is he is showing, and I think Corey Holcomb put this well, and a lot of others have put it more eloquently than I, but he has said hey, racist white people, I'm your guy. That's what it comes down to. In addition, when I have criticized his words in the past, and I have criticized things that he has said on policy, when I have criticized his rhetoric on, and if you've seen this before, I'm sorry I'm saying it again, but I just find it to be hilariously dumb. When he said the reason that everything happened to Tyree Nichols and the officers that beat them was because of single black mothers. That's a preposterous statement. And then I went over the Deadspin article. And then I went over how he cannot have his services retained for a lengthy period of time at the employers that he has had because no one likes him. And no one wants to work with him. ESPN, Kansas City Star, Fox Sports 1, outkick the coverage, the blaze. Like, it's just going to happen at some point. 
because people don't like him. And yet when he saw my TikTok, apparently, he attacked me by saying, yeah, you know, this guy, he works for this company and he's a stalker. He, he, he stalks me. First off, don't know where you live. Don't care. But as I said previously, let's talk about stalker for a second. When LeBron James's house was spray painted with the N word, you didn't go after the stalker. You said, well, you know, uh, wealthier black people are immune from racism. He didn't mention stalker once when he had that back and forth with Chris Broussard. And then when he had that back and forth with Colin Coward on Fox Sports One on two different shows. So for a rioter, doesn't know the definition of stalker or just intentionally misuses it. But I do find it rather interesting that he would pivot instead of going over the merits of the pure nonsensical trash he utters at every turn, every turn. Astounding, really. But way to go, Jason. You're making a good living. He at some point made fun of Corey Holcomb for saying he makes $500,000 a year, made it seem like a putrid salary, which makes me question, considering what we learned about Steven Crowder and how much he wanted in order to team up with the Daily Wire, it makes me think, why is that a small sum? I think a lot of people would kill to have a salary like that yearly. What? And he's making it seem like small potatoes. Makes you think, doesn't it?